the whole idea of automation comes from the standpoint can i remove one step can i remove one step can we remove a couple of steps so uh, that that is essentially like how quickly can you get from point a to point b doesn't matter if you had just one step or a hundred steps between these two but you want to get from point a to point b without any human intervention that's where automation comes generally when people say automation we think of industrial automation which is automation as well you're replacing the human worker with a robot or a process automation you're, you're doing a bunch of things taking an item from one place in a workshop to another place in a workshop the human doesn't have to carry it anymore they put conveyor belts that's automation anything any process that makes it easier and removes the human factor from the equation that's automation while it has its advantages it also will have its disadvantages because sometimes there cannot there will be steps that cannot really be automated because they need the human uh, decision making process intervention so what you ideally do is remove uh, whatever you can automate you will automate okay with that in mind let's go forward with the uh, what's the scope of this webinar i've already given an introduction to the topic so we'll go with a uh, complete overview of the topic basic fundamentals in the field a simple demo uh, what is the state of art and how the field is evolution my evolu um, what's the evolution what's the next uh, evolving and career path and job opportunities so what is again what is automation so if these if imagine these are all the steps that lead to the green block ultimately automation can remove one step subsequently it can now you have identified since you removed this one step now you have identified hey it's also possible some other step can be removed it doesn't always have to be consequential steps that need to be removed then maybe something else you removed now new possibilities are emerging because of this slowly everything converges and instead of this process you have this process So when it comes to CAE modeling, we have CAE in uh, different markets, it has different meanings. But generally CAE means any engineering job that you're doing using computer. In one of those, in CAE, when we talk about uh, analysis as FEA analysis, we have FEM, which is non-modeling. So CAE, I've, I've written CAE modeling here, but generally it means meshing which is finite element modeling it's a it's a non-technical job because it doesn't really involve you to be a decision maker a key decision maker in the process of uh, meshing the file you can just you'll be given a cad you'll be asked to model something uh, you'll say okay this is for durability domain this is for nvh domain this is for safety and crash so you have give you've been given your parameters you know, make it for uh, 30 and 2. Maximum size is 30, average, uh, yeah, maximum size 30, average size is 2. Keep it an average at 15 or something. Uh, your quality criteria is given to you. That's it. All you have to do is make the flow properly, right? So you don't really have to think about it so much. It's work that just needs doing. It, but it is extremely important. If the mesh is not proper, you will not have good results. If you have no good results, these analysis are very important. They go to the government for sign-offs. Based on these results, these results are what validate if the vehicle model is right or wrong, which means you cannot just do any mesh. The mesh has to be very good. However, that said, it's also repetitive. Therefore, it gets boring. Therefore, it gets error-prone. You mentally switch off. That's why there is there is a automation uh, is so important there, and it's a single skill job, right? Meshing. How can how many you can mesh for one year, two years, three years? Now you start to do the same components over and over again, it becomes boring. You already know you can mesh and sleep. I have known people who who would be watching movies while they're meshing, would be doing uh, would be doing any other task when they're meshing. They would be talking, they'll be playing songs, they'll be because they really doesn't need that much of your attention. They know it now, it's practice. They don't even have to actively do it. The hand automatically goes. They look at it, um, they look at it, rotate, uh, 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 we call it rotational quads. I'm not sure how many people know what it is. So 
will just directly go and correct it. it it just becomes subconscious and therefore it's not gaining so much attention and also it's it, the skill is not growing right after two years three years of meshing what can what can you do next with this skill and that is one of the reasons why i got into automation because there were we used to do a lot of plastic modeling meshing and uh, plastic meshing is not a very easy job uh, uh, because you have a lot of variances in thickness you must apply you must uh, there will be a lot of feature densities now one feature is completed it must be integrated with the next uh, base and then the mesh will change again the thicknesses uh, distributions will change so on and so forth now answer uh, we prefer answer because answer is built on python and makes the process of automation very very easy extremely easy uh, everything you need is in one neat editor you have one place where all your api is available to you you have one editor the editor is not the friendliest of the editors if you have used any other editor like spider or uh, uh, i think uh, the the one is uh, pycharm or uh, even uh, notepad++ is more uh, friendlier than uh, uh, the answer editor but it's there in one place which makes a, which makes it a uh, um, very good neat package it takes away every non essential Uh, distraction away from the developer okay and the power of automation it's a second skill and once you have this in your mindset the hey i can actually use this to automate many things that once that that kicks in and becomes a reality it's like opening a new door to an entire different world that you didn't know existed before it's a second skill and this skill keeps growing the more you meshing the more things you seeing the more scenarios you can imagine that needs to be automated now you have a skill that you can use to automate basically you have now become the person who can talk to a computer and tell it what you need to need it to do and the language is python on that it could be any other language it doesn't need to be python it could be any other language right and it's a lot of fun this comes with a caveat if you do not enjoy programming then it won't be a lot of fun and even if you enjoy programming it's not going to be a lot of fun because i can tell you from personal experience there have been days that three four days i have not written a single line of code because i am stuck somewhere and it something is not working and uh, it's uh, it's that continuous uh, your, your brain is continuously engaged but suddenly some idea strikes and again from there again it it you take on a frenzy of coding like 2 3 hours continuously you'll code you'll write the script you'll test out stuff and before you know it a new solution is available that is the kick off the payback that we get from this and if you enjoy that this is an amazing new field that you can get into it's not even new it's it's just emerging now it's been there from a very long time but it was not this widely available and the problem is with the industry uh bigger industries have a lot of inertia they have standards in place that they cannot easily change because those things have been time tested and true and they do not have a lot of flexibility because lives depend on those standards they cannot just uh change a small thing and say let's try this one and see what happens they have to they are they have to be they have to adhere to standards and they have to adhere to uh, sign off from the government they have to make those reports that go to the government they cannot they cannot easily do that and automation is error prone it has to be continuously tested 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 and then the tool becomes mature and then you can say okay now we can you have to do a lot of correlation tests saying this is what we were doing manually now we are doing this through automation are the results fine all those things happen so it takes time and the industries are just now realizing that okay we have to the beginners is also are realizing that we have to take advantage of this otherwise we'll be left behind and now what happens is the better you do this the better you become you also can create a brand for yourself and it's a skill with multiple applications one of the other side things that i developed was when i was doing my job hunting i i wrote a email application that will automatically take my email id uh, my uh, resume and cover letter and send it off to a list of uh, recruiters 
because you're learning python as well and uh, in this you, you're now becoming very good with programming programming logic how to apply that logic to a different real life scenarios you see how it becomes it grows right so general workflow in uh, automotive industries uh, when we are talking we are talking about some 30000 uh, feet high overview okay so cad is generated the design team gives you the cad fea is done on it the model setup is created fea is and meshing is done on it the model setup is created model setup will include meshing and then subsequent handoff to the analysis guys who will then do the actual modeling as in modeling as in applying the physics and the boundary conditions and so on and so forth and then we submit it for processing once we get the results we do post processing and then we submit the design back to the cad guys the design team now this loop takes a while they once they are happy with the results because if they are not happy with something they will change the component again this whole loop happens once they are happy with it it goes to design phase so now from the cad to gen from the cad to generating to fe to generating to model setup there are parts that can be automated i have worked in this uh, phase of automation now i am working in this chain of automation so there is a lot of things you can actually close this loop through automation for there are there are kind of uh, analysis that you don't really have to have somebody else do it you can just kick uh, the design team once it's ready it can give the inputs and automatically this entire loop will be done without any intervention from human uh, resource and then there are extremely difficult ones now those things they can be uh, then they that will have to be done by human but any uh, say analysis or any process that can be standardized by a human can be automated as well and should be once it reaches that level of maturity now for the scope for series automation say job submissions in fe modeling meshing mesh finalizing what do you mean by mesh finalizing once you've done the meshing now you want to check for qualities automatically clear the qualities you want to assign part pid names and uh, you want to assign uh, do alignments then you want to do uh, uh, thickness assignments uh, then you want to do connections creations all of those stuff any of those stuff then brom preparation for collation like you if you have looked at any engineering bombs engineering bombs generally come in various formats various format uh, it will it will be like uh, the same work with the same excel workbook might have 10 sheets and 10 sheets will have 10 different formats of storing the same engineering information that we will need to complete the master model why do we complete the master model because the uh, the mesh generally how it happens is you have a set of 50 60 parts you g- distribute the parts among say 10 resources and the 10 resources now finish the job and they'll send it back to you once they've sent it back you must apply the material of the cad to the mesh model right so what we generally do is we'll merge it and if the fca numbers uh, sorry the part numbers and so on and so forth are same the module id is actually are the same then the parts will get automatically they'll get the material and the thickness properties and uh, metal properties from the cad now this takes about 6 7 hours of preparation there will be one guy who will be sitting in preparing a master model but if you can do bomb gener- bomb query uh, sorry uh, bomb automation you can literally make that uh, what we developed it i think it ran in under uh, 15 minutes or 20 minutes and the 15 20 minutes was because uh, there was some part of the job that had to run in ansa that was actually taking a lot of time but once that data was ready actual master model preparation and query generation query generation is tied to bomb preparation wherein if some materials are missing or if something is uh, uh, there is a data conflict it will generate a query for that so these two steps would be finished under 4 seconds something that used to take about 6 to 8 hours and one resource is consumed now you leave that resource this resource now goes to working in the mesh creating the mesh 
the turnaround time for the vehicle delivery becomes less, right? That's the power of automation there and the scope. And a material recommendation, like say one material is not there, but you want to see another material in place of that material. How do you do that? You want to, uh, how, how do you know? You will have to actually take a look at the material properties. When was it applied? Where was it applied? What its different operating condition behaviors? But instead of you doing that, some people might just rely on it based on uh, thumb rules or uh, a past experience. They say, okay, we were not using um, metal X Y Z. Instead of that, we use metal X Y A. Uh, we know that there will be in the similar conditions. We can use these kind of materials. What if there is a novel material that nobody has known? It's a new guy. He doesn't have a senior personnel available. What do you do then? Does he wait for other people? Or is there a tool that can help him? This material recommendation also will build, be built on data analytics as well. So once you get into this automation, you'll also see the power of an analytics. And uh, uh, save uh, legacy data uh, usage. That's one of the things that uh, we did there. Uh, when I was working at FCA, what we did was we would create a, a system that would say, hey, you got this new CAD. You have an old CAD file that matches 60% of it. Why don't you use that and make it, uh, you know, reduce your actual, uh, say if it's an 8-hour job, you have only 40% uh, of the job. So you can finish off this, whatever is the discrepancy, you can maybe finish it off within, say, uh, three hours, merge the files, send it. Eight hours job has become three hours job now. That kind of a tool. In analysis, you can use it for deck preparation, job submission again. Uh, so once the deck is modeled completely, it has been, say you're using uh, radios. You have created the materials, you have created the components, you have assigned the materials, you have assigned the properties, boundary conditions and everything. For you to do that job, it will take you maybe two hours, three hours, four hours, depending on the complexity of the model. With the tool, it always will take the same few seconds because it's a computer. It's You can't match that speed. It doesn't matter how big the model is. It will do the job in a matter of seconds, if not seconds, minutes. And then it can automatically, once the model is ready, it can submit it to the server, start the run, once the results are available, look at the post-processing and start generating the reports. Because again, what we are doing as a, as a human is step by step by step, we are looking at different, uh, we're going to different stages. All the stages can be connected. A little bit of, that is where the fun also lies. How do you connect it? It's not a very linear connection. It's not like, okay, take this uh, values, plug it in this thing, Done. No, you have to write that logic. You have to create that program. And that is where the fun uh, lies. That is where the challenge lies. And when you're doing it, anybody can do it, but doing it right is also very important. Okay. Because again, as I said, these results are very important. You can't, uh, while more so at post processing, you cannot give a wrong result. Okay. So let's talk about FE automation. What kind of things can we do? Geometry cleanup mesh generation uh, you can build features let's say you have dog houses uh, when you have dog houses you can quickly um, say uh, instead of you taking mid planes connecting the mid planes building the shell let's say you have a option that will automatically you'll just drag and select that and automatically it will give you surfaces the mesh of the faces that's something we did and it would cut down the time from 20 minutes to say five minutes or 10 minutes. So now this is one feature, but you have said 10 features like that. So 200 minutes, 200 minutes. You've saved those hundred minutes there. So you're saving the money for the company. You're saving your own effort and time and headaches. Part setting, PID creations, the thickness creation again, that will be. But thickness assignment, what I meant was uh, you can calculate the thickness.